Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday morning. In the pre-market this morning, things are fairly quiet. Employment numbers are coming out at 8.30. So far, stock index futures are below fair value. Commodities are mixed with uh, crude oil higher, while gold and natural gas are slightly lower on Friday morning. Now, the U.S. stock market was rather subdued on Thursday compared to Wednesday's trading activity, but not so much for the rest of the market. Uh, bond prices continue to move higher. The U.S. dollar index continued to move lower, making a new low for this move. And we saw the VIX move lower on Thursday, also making a new low for this move and closing below the $20 potential support area. Looking at uh, the Dow Diamonds, you can see that we closed slightly below uh, the previous day after making a new high. That's also true for the S&P 500. Uh, the NASDAQ 100 closed a little higher on the day. And then looking at the Russell 2000, we pulled back, not able to break out above the November highs. Now things looked a little different north of the border. Uh, there's the iShares for the TSX 60 putting in a new high yesterday and closing higher on the day. Now at the same time, we did generate a bearish reversal signal and uh, we saw a lot of those on Thursday. When we analyze this one, you can see that uh, we actually closed lower than we opened after making a new high. So that gave us a bearish reversal signal. A couple of things uh, to consider when you're looking at that signal because it often marks the top four move and uh, that is certainly could be the case here. But uh, at the end of the day, we still closed higher, and then we also did not close below the previous day's low. Those would be the other two indicators I would be looking at. Uh, we did end up closing higher on the day, that's bullish, and we certainly did not close below the previous day's low, so that is also bullish. Now, at the same time, we were watching the iShares for the TSX 60. The TSX itself hit our next price target yesterday, so that is certainly a measured move, and uh, we have certainly broke out above the August highs and that is bullish we'll just have to see if that resistance holds over the next few days now what uh, spurred the TSX on yesterday well gold was a major contributor and uh, there's the price of gold shooting up above uh, the previous high and uh, you can see that we closed just above the 1812.50 level and our next target is 1843.75 and then 1875 now to get there we need to take out the highs from August so that is going to be the first level of resistance we need to consider. We certainly have not broken away from the 1812.50 level. We just closed above it. So that is the first step. It does not look like we're going to try to do anything about uh, creating new highs on Friday. Now, gold stocks followed gold higher yesterday. There's the TSX Global Gold Index making a new high on Thursday. And there's the GDX also making a new high on Thursday. Now, bank stocks uh, had uh, a few interesting moves yesterday. There's the uh, TSX Bank Index closing at the upper channel line. We saw a new high for the TD Bank. At the same time, CIBC cratered on Thursday, and that's not something you see very often in the Canadian banking sector. Now, in the U.S., when we look at the Spider Bank ETF, you can see that uh, it looks like, uh, I don't know what it looks like, but that is incredibly weird. It's not something you see very often. There are some banks that look fairly normal right now, such as the Bank of New York and JP Morgan, but beyond that, a lot of U.S. banks look like this. Now, there's one financial institution the world is watching closely, and that is Credit Suisse. It has made a series of lower lows this week, and if we look at a monthly chart, you can see this financial institution has been in a long-term downtrend. Uh, just for reference, compare that to Bank of America, which in the same time period was able to move up from uh, $15 all the way up to $50 before pulling back in 2022. So they are certainly two different animals. Uh, typically during a rate tightening cycle, uh, some financial institution will have problems. Sometimes it's a lot, sometimes it's uh, one or two. And uh, people are betting money that uh, during this rate tightening cycle, Credit Suisse is not going to make it through. Now, looking at energy, uh, crude oil was up yesterday, not enough to give us a buy signal. Natural gas was down yesterday, not enough to give us a sell signal. Looking at energy stocks, uh, the Spider Energy ETF is still treading water up here. That's also true for equipment makers and explorers, uh, all still on daily sell signals. That's also true for the TSX Energy Index, still on a sell signal here, treading water. 
up at these levels. We're up at the top of the panic zones, not able to uh, retest the summer highs. And uh, then if we look at uh, the U.S. market, uh, Spider Energy ETF, we were able to not only uh, test the summer highs, but trade slightly above them. In both cases, our panic zone charts are projecting lower prices from here. Of course, the weakness in any projection is we don't know what we don't know. And that is certainly true for uh, any of the projections that we make. So for the Spider Energy ETF, we're looking for a move down to $75 at some point. It certainly has not started yet. Uh, to the first indication that that may happen is if we start closing below the recent low. Okay, folks, that is all for this morning's presentation. We're waiting for employment numbers to come out at 830. I'm going to publish this as soon as possible, and then the translated versions will be available about an hour later. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy your weekend. And the next time you'll hear my voice is on Sunday.